Hi there everybody, Mark Holzer here from the CBM. Uh, in a few of the previous videos, my colleague Tim has kind of set the stage for what the Cas9 protein does, how it works. Uh, that along with some of the resources from the HHMI website should give you an overall idea of what the Cas9 protein does, cutting double-stranded DNA, and how it does it, finding that PAM site, opening up the DNA and interrogating it with the guide RNA, and if it's a match, cutting the DNA from double-stranded with two nuclease domains. In this short video, I'm going to try my best to quickly provide some context to specifically where that Cas9 protein comes from. It's all well and good that it interrogates DNA and it cuts it and all the neat things it does, but the question I often step back and ask is why? What is it doing that for? And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today with this manipulative kit I have in front of me. So let me start by setting the stage a bit and explaining some of the pieces we're looking at. CRISPR is an adaptive immunity system in certain types of bacteria. So right off the bat what we're showing here with this yellow membrane is a bacteria. Everything inside of this region is part of the bacteria is inside of it and everything outside of it is outside the bacteria or the environment it's floating around in. Inside the bacteria we have a little part of the bacterial genome. Now a real genome has a lot more than just this region but this is the area we're going to be paying special attention to because it's called the CRISPR locus. It's all the regions of the bacterial DNA that have to do with Cas9 and how the CRISPR system functions. I'm going to throw a handful of terms at you for the different colored regions of this that probably won't mean very much yet. They might because of some of the previous videos you've watched. But I'm hoping that if I get those terms out now, once we've walked through this whole process, we can revisit them and they'll make a little bit more sense with each of these regions. So the orange region is our tracer section of the CRISPR locust. This is the Cas9 gene. This is called the leader sequence. All three of these are identical sequences of DNA. These are called the repeats. And then these two, these are called spacers, and they're different sequences of DNA. And again, we'll discuss why that is and what these names mean again at the end, where they'll probably make a little bit more sense after seeing how this all works. Then the last component here is a little bacteriophage. So a bacteriophage is a type of virus that infects bacteria. And so we're going to start with that. This guy's going to come in and he's going to dock onto the membrane of our bacteria. And he's going to start inserting his viral genome. So this comes through the plasma membrane and gets brought directly into the bacteria that this bacteriophage is infecting. So now we have a viral genome inside of the bacteria. And the goal of the virus by injecting this DNA, its viral genome, is to take over the cell, to essentially start producing more virus proteins by having this DNA transcribed into RNA, mRNA, and then translated into additional proteins. That's kind of the standard life cycle of a virus. But in this case, because this bacteria has a CRISPR adaptive immunity system, the first thing that the bacteria will do is it will cut a chunk of this viral genome away. This now is free to be inserted into the bacterial genome. For the sake of this model, we're going to jump from this small little piece of cut yarn to this purple piece right here. It's going to make it a little bit easier for us to do the next steps with the rest of this model. So what will happen is this will split open, right about like that. One of the repeats, it's two stranded, so one strand will stick with this end and one strand will stick with this end. And our viral genome will be inserted directly into the bacterial genome. A little chunk of the viral genome, not the whole thing, just a little chunk. Those two halves of the repeats are then filled in. And the end result is a CRISPR locus inside the bacterial genome that has a little chunk of the invading bacteriophage's DNA. 
So now we can go back and look at these two regions, this yellow and this tan, and we can guess what these might be. Well, these are chunks of a little bit of bacteriophage genome from a previous bacteriophage that might have attacked this bacteria. And so you can have lots of different segments of previously encountered bacteriophages in this CRISPR locus, each one bracketed by identical repeat region of DNA shown in black. And this is where the acronym CRISPR actually comes from. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. And so at this point you now have a bacteria who in its genome, in the specific CRISPR locus of its genome, has a lot of different chunks of viral DNA that it's acquired over time. What does that have to do with Cas9? Well, the entire purpose of the Cas9 protein is to use a sample of previously acquired viral DNA to identify and then cut future instances of viral DNA. In other words, if the bacteria encounters that same virus over again, it now has a segment of DNA directly from that virus that it can use to scan and find the viral DNA that's being injected into it and cut it up so it can't act. Let's see how that actually works. Let's see how a CRISPR locus then is turned into an actual Cas9 protein ready to go out and surveil for attacking bacteriophages. Or the first thing we're going to make is the Cas9 protein itself. Like I mentioned, this right here, this white area, is supposed to represent the Cas9 gene on the bacteria's genome. So if you remember your flow of genetic information, it always goes DNA to RNA to protein. So this DNA, this double-stranded DNA, will open up, and we will make an mRNA transcript. So this now is an mRNA transcript based on my original DNA, and then it closes that double-stranded DNA back up. This uh, mRNA transcript then is translated with a ribosome into proteins. In this case, we have a little oval representation of the Cas9 protein. And if you remember back to your flow of genetic information lessons in your classes, you may know that mRNA can be reused. So even though we only made one mRNA transcript in this model, we can still transcribe three times to make three individual Cas9 units. We're going to set those aside. So that's our Cas9 protein. Now we need to load these Cas9 proteins with our guide RNA. And that uses the little segments of viral genome that we've inserted into this CRISPR locus. Once again, the DNA unzips, and then starting at this green leader sequence, the leader sequence tells it where to start transcribing this region, we're going to start creating our RNA transcript. go all the way down our entire CRISPR locus in this model. So we're going to go all the way to the end. And now when we pull this apart, we've created a length of RNA. Our DNA zips back up. So in this little RNA sequence, we've essentially created a repeat and a spacer from one bacteriophage, a repeat and a spacer from a different bacteriophage, a repeat, and a spacer from a third different bacteriophage. The repeat is always identical, and the spacers are from previously encountered viral genome, bacteriophage genome, that this bacteria or one of its ancestors had encountered in the past. The next step involves this orange region over here. This is the tracer RNA region, and again, it is unwound, the double-stranded DNA is opened, and you create three RNA copies from that. And then it's closed back up. And these ones I've modeled with a little bit of a kink here, because they come over then, and they base pair 
with our three repeats. Remember, these three black repeats are identical in sequence, just like these three orange tracer RNA pieces. And then the last step in the processing of this whole transcribed RNA array is to separate them into three individual pieces. These then get bound tightly into our Cas9 proteins. We've, and so we have produced three Cas9s, each that are loaded with a guide RNA ready to target a different bacteriophage genome. And so pulling this all back together to the Cas9 protein and some of the videos you've watched before this one, so the next time that this bacteria is attacked by one of the bacteriophages it's seen before, it's going to have a Cas9 already ready and loaded with a section of guide RNA that matches the genome of the infecting bacteriophage. And so when the guide RNA in one of these Cas9 proteins recognizes and matches a section of the DNA being injected by the virus, it will know to cut that and it'll stop the virus from impacting the bacteria. So now just to review all the names for these things one more time since we've walked through it and hopefully you have a bit better understanding of where a Cas9 protein comes from. This is our bacteria. This is part of the bacterial genome, a specific part that we've modeled called the CRISPR locust. It has a orange region called the tracer RNA which becomes a, an important component of the guide RNA in each of our Cas9 models. We have a Cas9 gene which is transcribed into mRNA and then translated into three, in this model, three Cas9 proteins. We have the leader sequence shown in green which tells this uh, bacteria where to start transcribing to create our CRISPR arrays. And then we have the repeats followed by these spacers. So a repeat that's identical over and over, followed by a spacer that represents a different piece of viral genome that had been acquired or inserted when this bacteria or one of its ancestors had encountered that bacteriophage in the past. So I hope that sets a little bit of background into how a Cas9 protein actually comes to exist. The DNA is acquired from a previous infection of a bacteriophage. It builds a guide RNA and a Cas9 protein. And the Cas9 protein then holds that guide RNA ready to go and surveil for any future infections from a, the same type of bacteriophage. Good luck.